What's up everyone? Welcome to my recap for the month of September 2020 where I read a lot of the comments that you made on my videos over the past month. And this month was pretty okay for the channel. I got 59 subscribers over the past 28 days which is a little bit down from last month. I remember a month ago I was gaining 100 subs a month so my growth has definitely stalled a little bit but in terms of views there's not much of a difference. Watch time is actually up by 8% and my revenue is the highest it's been in a while. $23.13, which is still pretty small, I guess, but I'm pretty happy that my revenue has shot up so much. It's, it's weird because I've been getting less views and not a huge difference in watch time, but the revenue is going up quite a bit. You see it's increased 44%, which is a pretty big number. So I don't know how YouTube's algorithm works. I don't know if Maybe the economy is improving a little bit, so they're buying more ads, you know, these companies. I'm not exactly sure what the deal is, but it's nice to have more money in your pocket from YouTube, even though it's not a big amount. It still, it still means a lot to me. Thank you guys for your support. And for this gameplay, we're playing Titanfall 2. I got the PC version. I'm subscribed to the EA Play service, so I got the game. I wouldn't say for free because I did pay the subscription, but you guys know what I mean. I got access to the game with my subscription and it's actually really good i didn't play the game back in 2016 when it came out i got battlefield 1 instead i don't know why ea released two shooters within weeks of each other that was a really bad move and i think that's the reason why titanfall 2 failed but it seems to have this huge cult following because people are still playing online and it's actually a really good game so if you haven't played it before i definitely recommend you check it out but with that said let's get on with your comments so for my first video in the month of september i took on the issue of nintendo having a limited release for the super mario 3d all-stars which i'm sure everyone is aware of at this point that the game has a limited release schedule so after i think it's march uh, not only will it not have any physical copies available but it will be removed from the digital store, from the eShop as well. So I pretty much made a video ripping on Nintendo for this. Like, even for Nintendo, this is a pretty low thing for them to do. Nintendo's always been a shady company, but for some reason they get a free pass when companies like EA and Sony and Microsoft get a lot of flack for the shit they do. It just makes no sense to me why Nintendo gets so much love and admiration in the gaming community when they're not really a much better company than the ones that get ripped on. By the gaming community. I think it has to do with nostalgia. People have warm, fuzzy feelings about Nintendo. You know, they grew up with Super Mario. They grew up with Zelda. And for a lot of people, Nintendo is the reason why they're a gamer today. So they don't want to have to admit that there's anything wrong with the company that they love. They, they, they kind of have a loyalty to. And I think that's what it is. I think that's why Nintendo fanboys are so rabid and why people just won't accept the fact that Nintendo is also a shitty company. And this comment from Magnamaster really emphasizes that point very well. He writes, A YouTuber by the name of Inferno Plus already made a Mario Battle Royale a long time ago, and Nintendo sent legal threats to him. Now they are selling his idea as their own. Think about how scummy that is. So this is in reference to the Mario Battle Royale that's also being released alongside Mario All-Stars and a few other titles that are celebrating Mario's, what is it, 35th anniversary? Yeah, 35th anniversary. Uh, yeah, Nintendo not only took down the project or sent legal threats against him from making a fan-made Mario game, but then they took it and sold it as their own. How fucking shitty is that? But legally, they can do it because, as you guys know, with modding, with fan-made projects, you are using the intellectual property of a company that owns that IP. So Nintendo can just say, fuck you, I'm using this shit. Like, there's really nothing that can be done legally about it, unfortunately. But it just goes to show you how scummy Nintendo is. Moving on to a comment from Captain Crunch who writes, Imagine all the new ways big players in the industry will try to screw over consumers. Was already salty about the Nintendo tax, but this takes the cake. Yeah, this is probably one of the worst things Nintendo's ever done. But yeah, in reference to the Nintendo tax or the Switch tax, the reason why Switch games are so expensive, as you guys know, is because it's more expensive to manufacture games on a cartridge than an optical disc. But for some reason, the, that price is still carried over to the eShop. Even though you're buying digital games, they're still just as expensive on the digital market as they are physically. And it's just, it, for some reason, all the costs are driven up for Nintendo games 
across the board and it's just it's really frustrating it's the most expensive platform to play on in terms of playing games and honestly like people don't realize that despite how cheap the switch seems to be you're gonna spend a lot of money on storage because 32 gigabytes is <laughs> not even close to being enough uh, you got to spend money on storage you got to buy a 60 dollar pro controller you got to buy all these different things that Nintendo is actually a really expensive platform. And then when you add in the games being more expensive than any other platform, yeah, I just don't I don't see the appeal of Nintendo. I get though the whole Switch thing is cool, but you get less graphics, less powerful graphics. You get uh, a handheld that lasts you an hour and a half, two hours of battery life. Yeah, no thanks. When I say I'm done with console gaming, that includes Nintendo. I am never going to buy a Nintendo Switch. Ever. To me, it's just not a good value. Then we got an interesting comment from Shinsaken, which I want to read to you guys, because I, I do think it's really interesting to this discussion. They would make more money if they keep it on the market. So, yeah, I, I, it, you think they would make more money if they didn't have that limited release, if they allowed you to buy it whenever the hell you want. If you want to buy it five years from now, you should have that option. But Nintendo is all about generating hype, and getting people to care about their platform. That's the main reason why they're having this limited release. One reason is because it makes sure that it gets as many sales as it gets within a certain time period. Because remember, not only, I'm sure it's going to have a limited production of physical copies, but literally everyone is going to buy that game. Everyone who has a Switch is going to buy that game knowing that it's not going to be around forever. So actually, they might actually make more money doing this limited release than keeping it on the market. The second point is, people are going to realize that the actual 3D All-Stars is not good. It's not good quality. Anyone who played it, it it's a joke. The 3D All-Stars was supposed to be this huge remaster of three games. D the Super Mario 64, it looks like the Nintendo 64 version. They're, they did absolutely nothing to upgrade that visually, which is really disappointing. Uh, they didn't really do much for uh, Super Mario Sunshine either. I can run that thing better on my Dolphin. And as far as Super Mario Galaxy, it does look a little bit nicer and cleaner. And it, it is on HD on the Switch compared to the Wii version. And you don't have to use that awful motion control setup. But it's not... Nintendo didn't really put much effort into this thing. So they wanted to make sure they maximize sales as much as they could, releasing a shitty product like Super Mario 3D All-Stars. And it seemed to work. <laughs> as fucked up as it is, that's exactly what happened here. So, yeah, unfortunately a lot of people fell for it. A lot of people bought it because of that whole thing of like, if I don't buy it now, I'll never be able to experience it. But you can experience it just fine on your Wii or your Nintendo 64. Or no, You can play Mario 64 on the Wii, right? They have the virtual console. I think they actually shut that down. I'm not sure, but... There's just so many different... There, there are so many better ways that you can play those games than, than the Switch version, I can tell you that. So moving on to my next video, where I talk about the Xbox Series S, which was revealed early last month. And in that video, I make the case that Microsoft definitely has a better chance of winning this generation with the Series S. I didn't go as far as to say that Microsoft will win next gen. I still think Sony is going to win, but you can make the argument with Game Pass and these subscription services, Microsoft doesn't necessarily need to win the generation in terms of hardware sales. So even if they sell more PS5s, Sony, Microsoft, you can still make the case that they would win the generation with Game Pass subscriptions and whatever else they might be selling to you. I did bring up in that video that even though the Xbox Series S is very enticing being a $300 console, it's a lot more expensive than people think. Yeah, it, it's kind of similar to what I said about the Switch, but it's even more expensive because you got that $200 SSD that is required. You you cannot game on a Series S and not get that $200 SSD. So you'll be spending at least $500 on a new console that can't do 4K. Yeah, you know? and I was saying mostly positive things about the Series S, but it's just something people don't realize is that they're getting scammed, and you know that's that's a good uh, foreshadowing into a into something we'll be talking about later on in the video, which is another video I made talking about why console gaming is a scam. But it definitely, it, it, it's, it's definitely true. Console gaming is a scam. And let's look at this comment from Means or Dreams, which definitely confirms that. Consumers aren't smart enough to take into account the online subscription. 
They just think it's a good deal because of the low upfront cost. If consumers were actually smart, everyone would be buying a gaming PC. Absolutely true. And we'll be talking more about this very subject shortly. But as far as the Series S is concerned, yeah. $100 a year for Xbox Live. How insane is that? $100 a year. And people are willing to pay it. It's just insane to me. I don't care if Game Pass is included. You can get Game Pass Ultimate for $100 a year. I don't give a fuck because it, it, it doesn't matter. Because, they're and, and, oh, you get all these games. But what happens when that game leaves the service? What happens when that happens? You know what I mean? You don't have any ownership for your games. You, you can make the case that Game Pass is a good value. And I probably will subscribe to it soon, actually. I'm not trying to knock on the Game Pass service. But for that to be a requirement on consoles to play online... When no such requirement exists on PC, I can get Game Pass on PC, no problem, and not have to pay, not have to have Game Pass in order to play my games online. It's just, you console gamers are happy getting scammed. You guys really are. <laughs> and it's just, it's just funny to me that, yeah, no, it, it's, this Series S is going to sell a lot of units. I, I imagine, I actually predict that they're going to sell a lot more Series X consoles than Series X or whatever other consoles they may come out with in this generation. Then Arscape makes an interesting case that the only way Microsoft could win next gen is if they make online free. Well, I'll tell you one thing, that's never going to happen. Microsoft is not going to make online free. They want to have that gold subscription tied to Game Pass Ultimate in order to get you to buy Game Pass Ultimate, to subscribe to their service, to subscribe to Game Pass. And... They pretty much want to require Game Pass. That's that's pretty much Microsoft's end game here, is to get as many Game Pass subscriptions as possible. Pretty much putting a gun to your head saying, oh, Game Pass is great, you want to buy Game Pass, right? And, and then if you don't buy it, they'll blow your head off, or you just can't play games online. Uh, whatever. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's just, um, you can tell, it's very transparent what Microsoft is trying to do here, but I think it's you make an interesting case that people might realize okay, $300, that is really cheap, but I have to spend $100 a year for online? Or even just comparing the standard PS5 to the standard Series X. Wait wait a second, I pay $60 a year on PlayStation 5, but on the Series X, if I want to play online, I have to pay $40 more every year? Are you kidding me? Maybe, maybe that might be the difference maker for people saying, fuck you, I'm going to PlayStation. But... The, the truth of the matter is that most console gamers don't care. They'll pay whatever they have to pay. And they're not even going to question it. So, I don't know. I, I think I think the Microsoft being more expensive is going to hurt them. Uh, in terms of them getting actual console sales. But I don't think they care. I think they just want to maximize Game Pass as much as they possibly can. And that's why online is so expensive. But I do think if they did make online free, they would sell a lot more Xbox Series consoles this generation than they are right now with the $100 annual fee. And then PC Fan takes that point a step further and says they won't win. In fact, I see the Xbox Series being discontinued before the end of the generation. They are experiencing huge profit losses due to the cheap console prices. They will turn out like Sega. Also, even though the console itself may be cheap, one has to pay $100 per year for Xbox Live. If you add the console price plus $700 in the span of 7 years, you are spending at least $1,000 to play on the Xbox Series X. And I'm not even talking about the Series X. You're better off getting a PC. It's a much better investment in the long run. Absolutely. And like I said, we will talk more about that when I get to my console gaming is a scam video. So I totally agree with you on that point. As far as the Xbox series being discontinued, I'm not exactly sure about that because I think people will buy the console. It already is selling really well with their pre-orders at least, but I know pre-orders don't really mean anything. Pre-orders are for the people who are really enthusiastic about the next gen consoles and pre-orders always do well. But you know, I don't think the console is going to get discontinued. I don't think Microsoft is going to lose a whole lot of money because they're just going to make that up with Game Pass. You know what I'm saying? Like people are going to, everyone who has an Xbox Series S slash X is going to buy Game Pass. Like that's just the reality of it, and that's why Microsoft is even sticking around the console race. You can tell they don't really give a fuck about beating Sony in terms of hardware sales because they have no exclusive games, no games really worth playing. But you know, the whole idea is to add that eventually and add more games to Game Pass, buy Bethesda, put Bethesda games on Game Pass, you know, just 
that's their main focus. Their main focus is not to convince you to buy the console. Their main focus is for everyone who has that console, as little or as many as those people may be, to buy Game Pass. And I keep re-emphasizing that point because that, that is what Microsoft's endgame is here. That's their main focus. And then we got a comment from Phantom, which is pretty long, so I'm going to try to get through it a little fast just so we don't spend too much time on this one video. The Xbox Series S will be the best-selling Xbox next generation. It could potentially serve to even out the playing field a bit by closing the monstrous sales gap that the PS4 established. However, the PS5 is still going to win by a considerable margin. PlayStation has worldwide brand appeal, better marketing, first-party exclusives, third-party partnerships slash exclusives, premium features like 3D audio tech, adaptive triggers, haptic feedback, 499 PS5, 399 PS5 digital. Personally, I don't think that Sony needs to price match Microsoft, and I don't think that there is any financially feasible way that they, that they really could. Despite that, Sony understands the hype and demand surrounding the PS5, and they are confident in the product that they've produced and the content that they are offering. This won't be another PS3 situation. Sony was cocky and arrogant then. They are humbled and confident now. There are downsides on both sides, but I'm hoping that the PS5 versus Xbox Series battle brings back the intense competition that the industry had never seen until the 360 versus PS3. Yeah, I, I definitely agree with you that the sales gap will be narrowed quite a bit with the Series S console. I definitely agree with that. Uh, I, I also agree with most of the points that you explain why PS5 is going to ultimately win the generation. The only thing I disagree with you on is the whole, uh, you know, haptic feedback, adaptive triggers, the, you know, the whole dual sense controller. I don't really think any, the average person really gives a fuck about that. I mean, everyone, how many people were hyping up the, the touchpad? Like, if you were making a comment on a video seven years ago, you would have said, Sony's going to win this generation. Uh, part of the reason is because of the touchpad. Like, <laughs> obviously, that had nothing to do with it. But you're definitely, you're mostly right on point, though, as far as the PlayStation brand just having more prestige in the gaming community. Just having, just being a more reputable brand. Being a brand that's more highly, more associated with high-quality stuff. And yeah, they had a hard time with the PS3, but they, they... They, they fucking did amazing, that generation, actually. Like, okay, they probably did eventually, like, lose a lot of money, ultimately, because they had to pretty much redesign the whole console. They had to come up with all these exclusives left from right just in order to stay competitive with Microsoft, and it took them a lot to stay competitive, but they did. They pretty much tied Microsoft when it came to hardware sales, and, and that's pretty amazing, considering how Sony started off that generation. So if we get to see a little bit of that again where we get intense competition between two platforms. I mean, I would love that because part of the reason why last gen was so underwhelming, meaning the eighth gen, why it was so underwhelming was because you didn't really have that competition. And it really shows. It really shows the difference between seventh gen and eighth gen that obviously seventh gen is superior in every possible way imaginable from the quality of the games, the abundance of games, uh, and just the overall gaming experience was so much, it's just vastly superior in 2009, 2010 than it is right now. That's just, that's just a fact. That being said, I don't think console gaming is really going anywhere despite people really hyping up the new RTX 3000 series card saying they're going to kill console gaming. The PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series X, they're irrelevant because these 3000 cards. And I made a video talking about why that really doesn't make a lot of sense. So let's see what you guys have to say about that video. I got a good comment from Princess Scarlet, which I actually pinned on the video. She says, yeah, I never got it when PC Jerkoff said these cards will make the new consoles irrelevant. While there are some people as of late who are waking up and realizing that consoles are next to worthless, your average gamer doesn't really give a shit about the benefits of PC and just wants to play some good games. And these new consoles will provide just that. Sony and Microsoft aren't slowing down anytime soon. I completely agree with you on that. There will always be a market for console gaming, despite how amazing PC gaming is. And I'm the person that always talks about how great PC is. You guys know I'm far from being a console fanboy. This is not 2017 when I was making those videos. No, uh, I, I completely agree that PC gaming is the superior platform, but... Console gaming with those cheaper prices, even though they're not actually cheaper, which uh, we'll actually get into very shortly. Uh, console gaming is not actually cheaper than PC gaming. But, at the same time, 
people see those cheaper prices and they see certain exclusive games like uh, like Halo. Well, Halo's on PC, so that's not a good example. But with PlayStation, you see a lot of exclusives like God of War and Horizon. Well, Horizon's not exclusive on PlayStation now either. Um, <laughs> you have exclusive games on consoles, right? We, we You do have games that you can play on consoles that you cannot play on any other platform, including PC. That's especially the case with Nintendo, Mario Odyssey, Breath of the Wild, anyone? So exclusive content is part of that equation, and it's just consoles are still part of the mainstream gaming culture. People, their friends play on console, and although we have cross-play, so wh whichever thing your friend gets doesn't really matter so much, but still, people are just, they're used to their console, and I just don't see everyone just switching to PC. It's just not going to happen, and I guess the convenience factor is another thing people just don't want to bother trying to figure out how to build a PC and RAM and GPU, CPU, all this terminology they don't even want to bother learning, even though it's very simple. It's just, console gaming is always going to be there, for better or worse. I think that's just going to be the case. There's going to be a 10th generation of consoles, there's going to be an 11th generation, a 12th generation, a 13th generation. I don't see console gaming ever dying. Can it decline? Absolutely. Maybe it can decline to... Maybe PC gaming can take a larger market share, but maybe streaming can also, you know, have a piece of the pie as well. When we're talking about Stadia, Luna, Game Pass, xCloud, you know what I mean? It's possible that streaming is going to become the mainstream one day, which I hope does not happen because it's fucking terrible. But... It's, it's it's definitely a good possibility that if anything is going to kill consoles, it ain't going to be the PC. It's going to be, it's actually going to be streaming services. So, yeah, I guess we'll, we'll wait to see what actually happens. I mean, no one knows. Uh, I'm not a fortune teller, but the way I see things going, I just don't think console gaming is ever going to just completely die, no matter how powerful PC gaming is. Of course, of course PC's more powerful. Everyone's known that from the beginning. So, yeah, I just don't think the 3000 series really is going to play a pivotal role uh, for the next generation consoles. Then we got this comment from Pan Lama. I always think that PC gamers want PCs and console gamers want consoles. Those two hardwares are similar, but different at the same time. I probably always stay with PC only, mostly because I have too much games on Steam, and Epic, GOG, Origin, or even on my shelf. Game Pass doesn't make it easier, and there is just more and more games. I don't have time to play all of them. I actually... I, I completely understand where you're coming from on that. And that's part of the reason why I don't really want to get a PlayStation 5, despite despite all the shit that I really don't care for, like the paid online and just spending $500 on, an, on a piece of hardware when I already have a powerful PC. You know, those are the main two things that are keeping me from buying a PlayStation 5. The other thing, though, is like, okay, there are these cool games that m might come out, like Spider-Man and... Uh, uh, what do they have? Horizon Forbidden West, and a few games that I might like, like Sackboy Adventure looks really cool, Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart looks really cool, but I have plenty of stuff to keep me busy on PC. I don't have to have these games, so much so that I spend $500 on a brand new console. It's just, it just doesn't appeal to me. I'm probably going to either wait for the consoles to come down in price significantly, but I'm... I, any, I'm probably not going to buy it anyway be, just because of the paid online, how much that really pisses me off that I have to pay for that. And then I, I'll have to also buy another SSD in order to have enough storage to play the games I want to play. It's just, it's too, ex when you're already on PC or you're already on another platform, switching to another one or even like having another one on top of it, it's just, it's what what's the point, you know? So yeah, I definitely get where you're coming from on that. And then Friendly Tech writes, while I agree with your main point for sure, the Series S is nowhere near as powerful as an RTX 2070. I think you are confused about its performance specs GPU-wise. It is a 4 teraflop RDNA 2 GPU. That is not even close to an RTX 2070. Maybe just above half of it. Yeah. Uh, thank you for bringing that up because I did misspeak. I did not mean to say that it was as powerful as an RTX 2070. Uh, if anything is close to an RTX 2070, it would probably be the Xbox Series X, meaning the $500 console. I would say that the, the Series S would be a lot closer to the 2060 than a 2070, and even so, it might not even be as powerful as that, because apparently with a lot of these consoles, they're, they're having, like, fake ray tracing, 
where it's not even full ray tracing support. It like it kind of looks like it might be ray tracing, but it's also it has like all these little tricks in like in to make it look like it's full ray tracing, but it's not. It's like fake ray tracing, and, and games might only hit 30 FPS at 4K, which you know I guess makes sense in the case of the 2060 because the 2060 is not really meant for 4K. So this is like a 1440p. I mean, the Series S is a 1440p console, but even the Series X and the PlayStation 5, I think are going to have a lot of problems with hitting 60 frames at 4K, which is pretty troubling, and that tells you all you need to know that, yeah, those consoles really aren't... None of those consoles are really uh, on the same level as an RTX 2070. Maybe an RTX 20 Super at most, but not an RTX 2070. So thank you for bringing that up because uh, I really... I, didn't, I don't know why I said that, I definitely did say that. Uh, I'm not sure why. I, I just, like, I fucked up. <laughs> so thank you for bringing that up. Then we got this comment from Running Bear. Dude, give me a break, LOL. You hate consoles now? 11 months ago, you was ranting about how you like consoles more than PC. Before the 3070 and 3080 is would have costed $1,500 to $1,600 to build a PC with the power of a PS5 Xbox Series X. No idea what the hell that sentence was, but okay. Uh, now it's probably going to cost $1,000 to $1,100 to build something with equal power. Oh, okay, now I get it. Uh, you're still going to get an amazing experience for only $500. I personally enjoy PS5 exclusives more than the ones on PC. Cyberpunk was designed for last gen, so it's going to look amazing on the PS5. Plus, they're releasing a next-gen version of The Witcher 3. They'll probably have a next-gen version of Ghost of Tsushima and The Last of Us 2. I was a PC gaming for years, and it does offer better performance, but it doesn't have games like Ghost of Tsushima, The Last of Us, God of War. So you really have to ask yourself if you're actually getting a better experience. We've gotten to a point where all games basically look good. Personally, I'm buying the PS5 and playing Ghost of Tsushima, The Last of Us 2, Next Gen Witcher 3, Cyberpunk. By the time I finish those games, the next gen versions of graphics cards will be out and that's when I'm going to build a gaming PC. So I'll have a PS5 and a powerful gaming PC. I'm just not impressed with the 3080 because of the 10 gigabyte VRAM. I believe you're going to need more than 3080 to max games out this generation because games are already using 10. Just my opinion. At the end of the day, you're basically playing the same games and it doesn't really matter. Well, I love, I love that you bring up that it's so expensive to build a PC, which you can argue the case that, yeah, it is, you know, spending a thousand dollars plus to build, to build anything or to, to, to spend on anything is a lot of money. I think you're definitely right about that. But I love how you conveniently ignore all the other costs that come with a console. You say that the PS5 is only $500, but that's just simply not true. First of all, games are $70 instead of $60 on PC. And, I, you know, for in, in the case of that, granted, maybe it will probably, most likely it will eventually be raised to $70 on PC. But for now, $60 on PC, $70 on consoles. So games are more expensive on console. There's no such thing as paid online on PC. And I already made a video, I made a video breaking this whole thing down. And it's a perfect segue into the next video we're going to be talking about, uh, about why console gaming is a scam. But, you know, there's so many people like you that when you're arguing about PC versus console and you say, the PlayStation 5 is only $500 and a gaming PC is over $1,000. But do the math. If you have a PlayStation 5 for five years, 60 times five, you'll be spending another $300 just to play games online. A basic feature like playing online multiplayer. And I don't want to hear, oh, you get free games, though, on PlayStation Plus. Yeah, you get free games on PC also. I got a free game, GTA V on Epic Game Store, for free. No strings attached. I didn't have to pay a subscription. If you pay, if you don't pay the subscription, if you cancel PS Plus, guess what? You lose access to all those games in your library that you were enjoying on PlayStation Plus. So they're not actually free games, first of all. Uh, and the other thing about, fucking, about the PlayStation 5 is that you may be spending a lot more. So already we're at $800, which is close to the $1,000 PC bill that, that you mentioned. Uh, how about an SSD? You're going to spend another $200 at least for a one terabyte SSD on the PlayStation 5. I mean, they, they didn't actually reveal how much it's going to cost, but if the, if the Xbox One is going to cost at least $200, I'm sure the PlayStation 5 one isn't going to be any cheaper than that. 
So uh, that's already th you're spending a thousand dollars on a console, and we're not even talking about buying games. That's just the actual cost of the console alone. You're trying to tell me that console gaming is so much cheaper? Give me a break. Give me a break. And now we're finally talking about the video I made that a lot of people didn't like. Especially people, console gamers, they didn't like this video because they thought I was attacking them for deciding to play on a console, which I guess I kind of was. But it wasn't meant to be a personal attack against console gamers' intelligence because it's, it's not really about that. It's just me talking about why console gaming is a scam and kind of talking about what I just talked about in response to Running Bear, who was trying to make the case that console gaming is so much cheaper, but people don't realize all the hidden costs associated with console gaming and actually broke it down just like I did with that comment about well you got the paid online you got the SSD you got you have to have an external SSD and uh, you can't use a controller that you want to use so if you have like a dual dual shock 4 and you want to play with your friend you can't do that on PS5 uh, you know it's just shit like that that adds up that actually makes console gaming more expensive than PC and people just don't seem to realize that. Oh and before I move on to this next comment on the video about console gaming being a scam and I, I just remember what he what the guy said in the last comment that I read he mentioned that only a year ago I loved console gaming and I preferred it over PC and that's only because I had shitty ass internet remember that had like two megabits per second speeds that at most I had to use a 4G hotspot for my internet and I did prefer a console at the time because I was able to use physical media that made games download a little bit faster and it was a lot more practical for me at the time than trying to download all my games on PC. And that's the only reason why I temporarily switched from PC to console. But now I'm full on PC gamer at this point. I got a good internet connection now, so that's no longer an issue. And I'm I'm, I'm on PC and I'm never looking back, but let's see this comment from memes are dreams on my video about console gaming being a scam Fun fact your videos helped me make the decision to go to PC I didn't know anything and for about a week and a half I did research a bit each day and built my PC best gaming decision I've ever made games are so much more enjoyable when they actually run at high frame rates and I pinned that comment because I think it's really cool that videos that I make actually help people make decisions like that. I, I think that's awesome that people actually switch to PC because they watch my video. I think that's actually really cool. But like that's the purpose of the videos of course, but you know, being such a small channel, I didn't think I'd actually have influence over anybody and their decisions, but turns out I do and that's that's really cool. And then we have Lord Ehe Nacho. I I don't know how to pronounce that guy's username. I have no idea. But he says as for the monopoly concerns, yes, I totally agree with that. What the console manufacturers are doing is bullshit and criminal. I always support used games, but even so, that still does not make the consoles a scam. It just tells me the developers themselves are greedy uh, and trying to control and monopolize their console economy, which is unethical in of itself. Again, the consoles are ripoffs, yes. I'd rather stick to PC gaming from now on. I have cared less for Generation 7 when they released than I ever cared for console gaming in my life. And I have no incentive to buy Generation 8. And even on the game developer side, I question if it's worth developing my games for the consoles. And I see the same issue with the ninth generation. Yeah, so this is in reference to the point I made about physical media completely dying. And we're actually going to save that for the end of this recap uh, where I talk about how the the digital only consoles are really <laughs> it's not good news for GameStop so we'll say we'll save that discussion for the end but it's a point worth noting when we're talking about the entire physical market dying so now the entire market is controlled by Sony and Microsoft Sony controls the entire games market on PlayStation now that physical media is going to inevitably die I mean it, it, it we're not going to see it for a, for a few years, but it's going to happen inevitably, in my opinion, uh, the way I see things going. So if that happens, then games are going to be even more expensive than they already are on consoles. And as far as you saying that it's it's only it, the getting rid of the used games market only has to do with the greed of the developers and publishers. Sony wants the same thing that the publishers do in that case. And why do you think they're releasing digital only consoles? They want 
physical media to die just as much as the publishers do because they don't see any money, they don't see any revenue from used games. You know, Microsoft's whole plan in 2013 to have always online DRM, that was to so that they can make more money off of game sales and that the used game market would die. If that plan actually worked, you don't think Sony would do the same exact thing? They, they realize that Microsoft fucked up and they're like, guess what guys, we support used games. But you know that both Sony and Microsoft, they want nothing more than to see the used games market just collapse because that means more money for them because they don't make a cent off of used game sales. But yeah, as far as you being a developer and not knowing if you should make games on console or not, I guess it depends on what type of game you're creating. If you're an RTS if you're making like an RTS game or a arena shooter or something that like really is only only good on PC, then just stick with PC. But I guess I get what you're saying, where like how they're restrictive and it costs a lot to get a game published on console. I guess it's up to you to decide if it's worth it or not. I, I'm I'm gonna leave that decision for you. But uh, I I do know that the install base is huge. It's gonna be huge on the consoles. So if you if you really only care about sales, then I guess you should try to go on console. I don't know. Uh, but I guess I'll leave that for you to decide. Uh, but good luck uh, on your future game development career. And I, I really I do, really do hope you're successful. Then we got this video where I asked the question, are hard drives worth buying in the year 2020? Now, I got a 2 terabyte NVMe SSD a couple weeks ago, and I really enjoy it. Games do load much faster. And of course, an SSD is better than a hard drive, but they're also more expensive than hard drives and depending on your budget you might just be better off sticking with a hard drive for now and then getting an ssd later on because there are no games that are out there in the market right now where you absolutely need an ssd in order to run the game it's just that no game exists really so if you do plan on building a game pc but you have a very limited budget you're better off spending as many of those resources that you have on a cpu and you're a good gpu right like make sure that those two things are good in order to have the best gaming experience possible. Of course, RAM is another thing, but RAM is pretty cheap these days. Uh, but an SSD, I got a 2 terabyte SSD for $250. And for a lot of people, that's like a good chunk of their budget. So for a lot of people, it makes more sense to get the cheaper hard drive because you get a 2 terabyte hard drive for 50 bucks, but 250 bucks will get you a 2 terabyte SSD. So for a lot of people, it's more cost effective to get a hard drive. We got a comment from Saber who says, if you only ever intend to game and nothing else, then yeah, hard drives might not be worth it. And then Fatal Charade, who <laughs> is not a big fan of what I have to say about hard drives versus SSDs. He's always the one commenting on those videos that I make. And he's always telling me how wrong I am that, uh, that you should never buy a hard drive. And he says this, given the price of NVMEs and SSDs in this day and age, there's absolutely no reason why anyone building a game PC should even look at mechanical hard drives. And I guess that would be true if you have unlimited resources or if you just want to go all in on your PC build. But let's say if you have like, you know, $800, less than $1,000 for your budget, get the difference between a hard drive and an SSD for two terabytes, it's a $200 price difference, right? I mean, that that's just the reality in the current market. And yeah, they will eventually get cheaper over time the way the, the thing that i was trying to argue is that okay ssds will come down in price eventually they will be even cheaper than they are now and yes they have gotten even cheaper than they were just a year ago two years ago so they will come down in price over time it, you have nothing to lose if you get a 50 dollar hard drive for uh, that's two terabytes and then you can add an ssd you don't even need to uninstall or delete or move anything in your hard drive just if when you when you feel the time is right to get an ssd just get the ssd and add it onto your pci express port or even a sata ssd there really isn't a huge difference in terms of gaming you won't notice a huge difference between a sata ssd and an nvme ssd but i don't think it's fair to say that hard drives are not worth it if you're a gamer sure ssds are more convenient but it's also uh, convenience for an extra two hundred dollar price point. Uh, that's just uh, yeah. I think I think that's a bit steep. Even though I was happy to pay for the extra money for the SSD, a lot of people might not be, and might not be in the same financial position as you are. And then we got a comment from Tud 
1998. Same year I was born, 98. He says that hard drives could live longer than SSD drives. I heard that SSD is going to have big problems due to its lifespan. Yeah, I did hear a lot of things about hard drives having uh, being more durable and lasting longer, but th that also varies. It depends on what brand you get. If you get a cheap-ass hard drive or a cheap-ass SSD, you know, obviously it's not going to last very long, and I think that's part of what I said in the video. But if you get a really good SSD from a brand like Samsung, I don't think you have to worry about it just dying out on you. Uh, I don't think that's a huge concern. Then there's a comment from Mallow who writes, I have a 250 gigabyte SSD for my operating system, Steam, Discord, etc., and a fat 2 terabyte hard drive for everything else. Great thing about storage is that it's not an all or nothing thing. When I feel like I need that one terabyte SSD, nothing needs replacing. I don't necessarily need to move files and games around. I just drop it in and it does its thing. And that's exactly what I said like a minute ago, because it's true. Like if you get, if you cheap out on a GPU, then you wasted a shit ton of money because you, very soon you won't be able to run the games that you want to play. Same thing with the CPU. If you get a slower processor, uh, or if you bottleneck your, your GPU, yeah, obviously, like, th that's what you need to focus on. That's the point of my video. And with a hard drive, yeah, obviously, SSDs are better than hard drives. They will inevitably replace hard drives. But we're far along from that happening. We're at least a few years away. And by that point, SSDs will be dirt cheap, or at least a lot cheaper than they are right now. And you can just upgrade and add it on. So I don't agree with the uh, assessment that fatal charade made earlier that you have absolutely no reason to ever get a hard drive because like i said if your budget is limited you really have nothing to lose you really have nothing to lose yeah you, obviously your games will load slower you know ssds of course are better but there's still just a huge huge price difference between a hard drive and a solid state drive that it's just for a lot of people it's just not cost effective so that's what I, that's the point I tried to get across in that video. Moving on to my next video where I talk about the possibility that Sony is lying about Demon Souls exclusivity. And just to recap you on what that was all about, Sony released a trailer for Demon Souls on PlayStation 5 during their big PS5 event earlier last month in the middle of September, roughly around that time. And they had a they, they had a trailer for Demon Souls and it said PlayStation exclusive, but then the bottom in really tiny print, it said also available on PC or coming to PC, whatever it said. Like it, it, it said that the game is going to come to PC, even though it said PlayStation exclusive. Like uh, those two things are mutually exclusive. You can't have a PlayStation exclusive and a game that's also coming to PC. It's one or the other. So a lot of you were confused and a lot of people thought that Sony was not being completely honest especially when they later reverted they said oh no playstation uh, demon souls is only going to be on playstation it's a playstation 5 exclusive they kept reiterating that and said that whoever put that in in the trailer uh they, they had bad information or misinformation or whatever it was and it was an error <laughs> like something's definitely shady about this whole situation but i want to see what you guys think memes or dreams <laughs> sony lying huh interesting I never would have expected that. Yeah, Sony lying. They've never done that before. And we're definitely going to get to that a little bit later on. And you guys know exactly what I'm talking about, about games coming to PlayStation 5, that they'll only be on PlayStation 5. We believe in generations, but then we'll release our games on PS4 also. And that, that's another thing that we'll be talking about soon. So yeah, Sony isn't always honest and transparent. I remember they said, oh yeah, we're raising our PlayStation Plus you know, back in the day, back in 2000, what was it, 2014, 2015, we're raising it to 60 from 50 because we need to keep up with the servers. We need to make PlayStation better, and we can only do that if we raise prices on you. Meanwhile, the PlayStation Network is just as broken and fucked up as it was back in the PS3 days when it was free. So what did you actually get from a paid $60 a year subscription? Absolutely nothing. Yeah, Sony's always full of shit, but to be fair, so are, so is every company. Phil Spencer's a is a fucking pathological liar. Microsoft is full of shit. Nintendo is full of shit. Everyone is full of shit. It's their job to sell you shit. <laughs> you know what I mean? And then Faris Elkaridi asked me, are you still going back to consoles or no? 
The answer is no, and that goes off of what I was just talking about with paid online. I refuse to pay for something as basic as online multiplayer. If they make online free, uh, if the prices come down a bit, you know, because I'm not willing to spend $500 just to play a handful of titles. Uh, no paid online, cheaper console. Uh, also, SSD needs to be cheaper because I, I, ain't, I ain't about to spend... 200 plus dollars on an external ssd because you y'all y'all know that 800 gigabytes ain't going to be enough for the playstation 5 and yeah i i obviously like if i were to buy a console i'd be more likely to get the ps5 than a series x only because every game that that is on the xbox i can play on my pc just fine you know what i'm saying but there are games on playstation that you cannot play on pc so it's the exclusives that would really drive me to buy a console in the first place. I really haven't been impressed by the PlayStation 4's lineup of first-party titles. Uh, they, they all felt the same to me, and they were pretty underwhelming. So uh, they're going to have to step their game up in terms of quality. I want to see Infamous. Like, I want to see more Infamous. I want to see Little Big Planet, Mod Nation Racers. A lot of the great titles that got me hooked on PlayStation back in the PS3 era, I want to see a lot of that return. I want to see SOCOM. I want to see Twisted Metal. I know those games weren't so great on PS3. But I, I just want more variety. I want third-person tactical shooters. I want FPS games. I want a variety of different genres that I can play on PlayStation. But as it stands right now, every single exclusive is a third-person linear action game. That's the majority of PlayStation exclusives. Yes, Spider-Man Horizon are open-world games. But still, they're third-person action games. And yeah, obviously Spider-Man and Horizon play completely different from each other. But, my point still stands. I want more variety with the, the types of games that I can play. Because ultimately, I mean, third-person, single-player focused titles, like, they're, they're cool and all, but I want more. And that's what it's going to take for me to buy a PlayStation 5. And as of right now, I have no plans... On going back to console. Dan Daniel Smith says, I think it is exclusive. It has PlayStation Studios logo. It makes no sense to release Demon Souls at launch of PS5. Even Bloodborne didn't make it after all these years, and From Software wasn't Sony Studio. On the other hand, Bluepoint is as it seems. Um I, I, I couldn't understand half of what you wrote. I'm not trying to like knock you but the grammar was pretty bad and i had a hard time making out what you were trying to say but i think what you're trying to say is that it's going to be exclusive because it's it says it's exclusive it has playstation studios on it and apparently blue point is owned by sony i actually need to look that up because i'm not sure let let's do that real quick blue point games and for some reason it's taking a long time to load Okay, here we go. Blue Point Games is an American independent video game developer. So they are not owned by Sony, so I'm not sure where you got that from. So, yeah, I think there's actually a pretty good chance that Demon Souls comes to PC. Uh, and the fact that Sony is not really... They're contradicting themselves. They're saying, oh, it's PlayStation exclusive. But then if it was PlayStation exclusive, like, you know, using your same logic... It, oh, it doesn't make sense for it to not be exclusive because it has the PlayStation logo. But if it was exclusive, if it's only coming to PS5, then why did they say that it's also coming to PC? I don't care, you know, people say, oh, it's just an error, it's a mistake. That just seems a little fishy. It's very, very strange. I think we can all agree that something doesn't add up here. One way or the other. It's just a very strange situation. And who knows? You know, maybe, maybe it will be exclusive, maybe it won't be, but something's not right. <laughs> That's all I could say about that. Then I made a video talking about Jim Ryan's comments on the Xbox Series S, pretty much throwing shade at Microsoft and the Series S, saying that cheaper versions of consoles never work out, and people want to have more power, and these cheaper consoles, they just don't succeed, they don't do well. And I made a point to say that during the sixth generation, despite being the least powerful console on the market, the PS2 did just fine. It did more than that. It became the best-selling console of all time. So y you get the point I'm trying to make. Power doesn't mean everything, but if you do have a cheaper console at you know that that's much cheaper than the competition, and yeah, even if it only, if it only could do 1440p, I don't think the average person cares. I think the average person will be fine 
paying a couple hundred dollars less, which is a, a good saving for them, even though I already talked about how it really isn't, uh, how consoles are, are really not a good value. But despite that, if someone's set on buying a console, the Series S is enticing because, yeah, it can only do 1440p, but considering all the money that you would, I guess, save compared to the PS5 and Series X, it's a more budget, it's more friendly for budgets. And considering that a lot of people are having a hard time, uh, I think a lot of people are actually going to buy a Series S console. So I think Jim Ryan's wrong, but, you know, he's also, he's trying to sell the PS5. He's trying to hype up the PS5 as much as he can. And I think deep down Sony is actually pretty concerned about the Series S console. Adro Harv says, I know two people going to Series S route. Suits me too. It'll do just fine, I think. And then Paul B says, I'm also going to buy it. It looks great. So yeah, a lot of people are really interested in the Series S. The $300 price point is probably the most enticing, even though they don't realize they're going to spend a lot more. They're going to spend at least $500 on a console. But hey, uh, people are enticed by that price point. And I think it's going to do very well. I think it's going to be a big success for Microsoft. And of course, their big plan is to lead people into Game Pass. So that $100 a year subscription is for Game Pass, essentially. So... We'll see how that goes. And then Dr. Daniel 316. You know, with how much crap Sony talks, as well as hypocritical things, saying power is everything despite the PS2 being weak as fuck and selling more units than literally any other console, it would be honestly hilarious if they ended up getting destroyed by Microsoft this generation. I don't think it'll happen, but it'd be pretty funny if it did. But yeah, I don't think Sony is really being arrogant like they were during the PS3 era. I think they're just trying to do everything they can to undercut Microsoft, and that's their job. They're trying to win this generation. Uh, obviously, like, you can't take everything they say at face value, so I guess in that respect, this video is kind of pointless, you know, making a video about Sony's comments, but I thought it was kind of interesting because the console wars are in full effect right now, and I actually, I actually like the console wars. I think it brings the best out of all the competition. Competition is a good thing. Think. But I guess we'll see how this generation plays out. Let me know in the chat right now what you guys think. Who do you think is going to win next gen? Sony or Microsoft? Or how about Nintendo? We don't even talk about Nintendo that much. Nintendo already confirmed that the Switch 2 is coming out in 2023, so we're not that far away from Nintendo's next gen offering. But we haven't completely moved on to the next generation quite yet because Sony announced that Horizon Forbidden West, Spider-Man Miles Morales, and a lot of other PlayStation 5 exclusives are also going to come out on PlayStation 4. And in that video, I argued that there are certain games like Horizon 2 that should never come on PlayStation 4. Same thing with Halo Infinite. I feel like a big reason why that game's struggling so much and why they had to delay it and why they had so many technical problems is because it's also running on a seven-year-old console, the Xbox One. I think the same can be said for Horizon 2, which I'm sure will be a really good game. Don't get me wrong. Horizon Forbidden West will probably be good. Her Guerrilla Games is a really talented developer, but it could be even better if they just skip the PS4. There are certain games, Sackboy Adventure is a platformer. I feel like they can get away with putting that on both without there being too much of a compromise. And same thing with Morales, it's not really a sequel. It's a and it's it's an expansion. It's essentially an expansion DLC that they're selling as a full game. That's pretty much what Miles Morales is because you can get a bundle that will also include the original Spider-Man remastered. So an expansion being on PS4 also, I think that's okay. But a full-blown sequel like Horizon 2, that's gonna follow up on Horizon Zero Dawn. I just I think they should take the next-gen hardware. They should take full advantage of that. Because the, there's a huge leap. Unlike the PS3 to the PS4, which was pretty underwhelming in terms of the leap in technology, there is a huge leap between the PS4 and PS5. And I think that it would really be for the best. The game would be so much better if it, it's only released on PlayStation 5 and not the PS4. Although, it doesn't really affect my life. I'm not going to get the console anyway, but you know what I mean. So we got a comment from Fastbox who says, I think Sony stated that for the first year, they want to give consumers time to adopt the new console. Since there will always be a few people who like to wait it out just in case there are any problems with the new consoles. As you mentioned, the economy, it may be difficult for a few folks to obtain these new devices will hold games back. I think that's really up to the developers. You can always water down features and graphics on old hardware, but still make it enjoyable. In the end, 
you are right. We need to move on from these outdated systems, period. Yeah, I, I think it's going to be held back no matter what, because they're still, in order to have the core game to be put on these old consoles, you need to do a lot more than just tone down the graphics a little bit and take away a few features from the last-gen version, because we have seen that for a few next-gen ports for the 8th-gen console, you know, back when, back in 2013, 2014, you know, like Battlefield 4, for example, oh, you can only do 24 players or 32 players on the PS3, but if you want 64 players, get the PS4 version, and that made a lot of sense because it took advantage of the next-gen hardware while also releasing it on last-gen. And Battlefield 4, <laughs> that game was a fucking mess in the beginning, but it turned out to be a really good game. But I think, to a certain extent, though, there are certain games that just, like, you can't just water down features and take down the graphics a little bit and just get it to run. Like, they're, like core gameplay elements are dependent on newer technology in order to pull it off. That may include bigger open worlds, smoother gameplay, or just certain gameplay mechanics that you really couldn't pull off on last gen hardware but you could do it on the on the newer hardware you know what i mean so like think for example grand theft auto 5 gta 5 could not run on the ps2 you know what i'm saying like like the smooth driving and everything that could not run on a playstation 2 you know like so there are certain things like it, it, to an extent you're definitely right that you know they, they could just downgrade it and downgrade certain features and water it down but that only goes so far. Now we got another comment from Dr. Daniel 316. This issue of holding on to the last gen hardware to maximize an audience or sales is very reminiscent of the start of the eighth gen, where from 2013 to 2015, lots of developers still released their games on PS3 and Xbox 360, I think he means, not Xbox One, despite those being so underpowered by then that they were actively holding back the new hardware. Not like the new hardware was strong to begin with, but still. I remember games like Black Ops 3 being released on the PS3 and 360, and they were just horrid because the consoles couldn't handle the game anymore. Perhaps in terms of business, it isn't wise to dump the old consoles just yet, as most of the audience is still there, but I think switching focus to the new and better hardware will perhaps be better in the long run, as games won't be nearly as limited in what they can do, and it may even convince people to upgrade to the new hardware. And we got Ferguson who responded saying, the problem is even worse now. The jump from this gen to next gen is much larger than last gen to this gen. Horizon Zero Dawn is going to be extremely compromised game design wise, no matter how you look at it. And I totally agree with Ferguson. And I also understand what Dr. Dan is saying is that you have to understand the business element of it, right? Yeah, obviously the game will be better on PS5 than it would on PS4. It would be much better if it just didn't come to PS4. And what I'm saying is logically right and it's it's actually it's factual that it's true to be the case but if you look at it from the business perspective if you are sony you see that the overwhelming majority of your player base and your customers are still on ps4 you're gonna still put your games on the ps4 because that's how you maximize profits you know if you release horizon forbidden west uh, in 2021 only on ps5 and I'm, you know, the PS5 is doing very well in terms of pre-orders, and it will probably sell a decent amount, although people are still going to hold back on adopting with COVID and the economy being awful, and even though it's on the path to recovery, still, people can't make that commitment, $400, $500 for a new console. But yeah, business-wise, it makes total sense, because it's just, you're going to make a lot more money if you continue to support last gen and eventually people will want to upgrade of course like i think by 2022 2023 the ps4 and xbox one will be completely discontinued that there, there will be no new games on those platforms or at least no full support maybe you'll get like just dance uh, i think that those games are still on the wii they're still releasing just dance on the wii just dance 2019 i think it was they got a fucking wii release and it didn't didn't come out on the Wii U. That tells you a lot about how much of a failure the Wii U was. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, I think there I can understand both perspectives. Uh, but I do, as a gamer, I lean more towards the gamer side of things, being that you'll just have so much more potential with those games, and the games will be so much better if they just skip last gen or current gen, whatever the fuck you want to call it, the PS4. If you just stop putting 
the big releases on PS4 going forward. Then I made a video talking about the huge acquisition, Microsoft buying ZeniMax Media for $7.5 billion, the largest acquisition in video game history. Their acquisition of Mojang back in 2014 was huge, and that was $2.5 billion. This is like almost three times that much. Holy shit. Like, I, I think I did not expect to wake up to that news. I really, I heard rumors about Microsoft buying ZeniMax, but I'm like, there's no way that's going to happen. Like, the same rumors that Microsoft is working with Sega and they're going to call it the Sega Series X in Japan. Like, that's just, I think that's bullshit. That's probably not going to happen. But I thought the same thing was true with ZeniMax. I'm like, there's no way Microsoft's going to buy ZeniMax. But they did. And it got a lot of people talking. People are saying this changes the whole dynamic the whole momentum going forward for this next-gen console, that all the momentum Sony had, it stalled. And now Microsoft's got all this momentum because of a huge catalog of games that they have for Game Pass, but potentially they could be exclusive. Now, I said in the video that I have a feeling, I have a good feeling that Starfield, that uh, whatever the next Fallout is, Fallout 5, which probably won't even come out until... I'm 35, <laughs> you know, it's going to be a really long time before that happens. We'll be on PlayStation 7 by the time we get Fallout 5 because Elder Scrolls 6 is probably not going to come out this generation either. It's probably going to be PlayStation 5 before Elder Scrolls 6 comes out. We're talking like 2026, 2027 that ES6 will, will come out. Uh, but I have a feeling that Elder Scrolls 6 will also be on PlayStation. I think Doom will be on PlayStation. I think... They're, they will develop certain games, like new IPs going forward. I think they will be Microsoft exclusive, but I could be completely wrong. Maybe Microsoft will say, fuck it. All these games you can never play on PlayStation. It'll be a way for them to get an edge over Sony that they probably really need at this point, you know, because Sony does have a lot of, a lot, a lot of things going for it. I mean, they're going off the success of the PlayStation 4, which just blew Microsoft out of the water. And they do have a lot of interesting exclusives coming out. So Microsoft needs to counteract that somehow. And of course, all their games are going to come out on PC as well. But just on the console side of things, they need to do a lot more than they're doing right now. Because all they have right now is Halo, which got delayed. So they don't really have any games. At least at least with PlayStation, they got Spider-Man, Miles Morales, you know? And, and Demon Souls, which might eventually come to other platforms, because Sony is being really shady, like we said. But still, like, I think Sony's got a lot more momentum, even with the ZeniMax purchase. But if Microsoft says, fuck you, all our games are coming, uh, are not coming to PlayStation 5, then that very well might change the dynamic of the console race. Maybe not completely. It's not, that, that alone is not going to shift the entire trajectory of the console war, but it can definitely do a lot to help them. Microsoft. But I want to hear what you guys have to say. Sailor Mercury says it's weird how I went from having little to no interest in Xbox since 360 over a decade ago to now wanting to pre-order a Series S tomorrow. The Game Pass service sounds incredible even before this acquisition, but now I feel I need to get in on this. Hopefully their pre-order process isn't as chaotic as PS5 was. And of course, Sailor Mercury commented this over a week ago, and as we know right now, the Series S slash Series X pre-order, <laughs> it, it was a shit show. Just like the PlayStation 5. Probably even worse though, because people, people bought Xbox One Xs. They bought Xbox One Xs, thinking it was the Xbox Series X. It, it's just, <laughs> Microsoft's nomenclature is just, it's really bad. It's probably a worse name than the Wii U, the Series X. People are just so confused, they don't know what the fuck they're buying. And that's a big problem. That's another thing that Microsoft has going against them heading into next generation that people aren't like the average person isn't going to know the difference between series s series x one x uh xbox one s you know the names are just too similar to each other and they really needed to have a different name like ps4 and ps5 it, it's obvious what the difference is between those two consoles because it's the playstation 5 compared to the playstation 4 you know what i mean so I think that's a big problem for Microsoft. I think <laughs> that was really bad. But I think it's interesting that you say that now you're interested in an Xbox and you're interested in pre-ordering that console over the PlayStation because of this acquisition. But 
keep in mind there's a lot more to gaming than just Bethesda. Bethesda games are few and far between these days. I mean, we get a new we get a new Fallout slash Elder Scrolls slash Starfield every three to four years if we're lucky. And as far as the other games like Dishonored and Doom and Quake is kind of dead and really wouldn't work well on console anyway, but you know what I mean? Like, Bethesda is a big acquisition, but they're not, like, as huge as, like, let's say if all the EA games were exclusive to Xbox, which probably would have been a big game changer, but that that's just unrealistic. EA is a huge company, and they're not, they're not interested in being sold at this point. Now we got a comment from Angry Mobster. Says, it's cool and all, yet again, it is Microsoft. I hope they don't do what they did to Rareware and just buy them and throw them in the shelf. Now, I don't think that's going to happen. Although, I understand what you mean with Rare. They did come out with Sea of Thieves, which I heard a lot of mixed things about. Like, at first it was just awful, but it eventually turned into a good game. It's pretty much like No Man's Sky on water. That's what I heard about Sea of Thieves. Uh, but, yeah, obviously Rare has... <laughs> has gone downhill since Conker's Bad Fur Day and Banjo-Kazooie and a lot of those other classic games that they made back in the day, Donkey Kong. But as far as them making changes to ZeniMax and Bethesda's game development, they said they're going to leave them alone, but that remains to be seen. I think with a huge purchase like that for $7.5 billion, they might have a little bit more say than you think, you know, like than, than they say that they are because that is a huge investment and they want to make sure they maximize their profits and they get a return on that investment as much as they possibly can so i guess we'll see if there are any meaningful changes to bethesda but i do think that microsoft is going to try at least initially to have a hands-off approach just use the catalog of bethesda games to entice people to buy game pass i think that's their big motivation right now but we'll see what the future holds for both microsoft and Zenimax and see if this acquisition turns out to be a really good move and then SpongeMat says, it still blows my mind that Microsoft can make a bigger acquisition than Mojang. And Arioka responds, says, it's peanuts money for them. Microsoft is worth $1 trillion. And yeah, he's definitely right. It's They can definitely afford to buy. I think they paid cash, right? It was $7.5 billion in cash. It wasn't like, uh, oh yeah, we'll acquire you and uh, and it will be like based off stocks. You know, that that's how a lot of these acquisitions go. These huge mega million acquisitions. This is for $7.5 billion. But for a lot of these acquisitions, most of it is based off of stock rather than actual cash buyout. You know what I mean? So, uh, no, Microsoft just said, fuck it. We're, we're, we're paying cash. They want to make sure they got ZeniMax. Because ZeniMax is probably like, the way the way the negotiations went is like, uh, Microsoft's like, oh yeah, we'll give you um, we'll give you seven point five billion dollars in stocks and trades and you know and all that stuff. And Zenimax is like, nah, buy us out for cash, thinking that Microsoft was going to refuse. And Microsoft's okay, deal. <laughs> I have a feeling that's exactly what happened at the negotiating table. And then the people at Zenimax, they they like looked at each other and were like, oh shit. We just got bought for $7.5 billion. <laughs> and the best part is most of the people are keeping their jobs anyway. It's like when Dana White sold the UFC for $2.5 billion, he's still in charge. He still makes the shots. He still calls the shots. And he got a nice payout. So that's like the best of both worlds. Uh, but we'll see. Like I said, we'll see what happens in the future. But yeah, it's just crazy that $7.5 billion Microsoft can just throw like nothing. And I spent a lot of time the past month talking about the PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series X, so I thought I'd change things up a little bit, talk about another next-gen console that's coming out that nobody's really talking about, the Madbox, which actually might not be coming out after all, which I discussed in the video because we haven't got an update on the console in over a year and a half, and it seems like all the investors that were invested in the project they pulled out, so the Madbox is probably not going to come. But based off of what they were pitching, that was going to be the most powerful console in the market, but they didn't have any games to back it up, probably wouldn't have been a huge success anyway. Probably would have been just as successful as the Steam Machine consoles, and we all know how that turned out. So I guess you could say the console is unofficially canceled, and we got a comment from Sean Dell Rivers, who says, I knew Madbox was going to get canceled anyway. But at the same time, that's too bad it's canceled because I really was interested and looking forward to Madbox. I had no concerns with no video game systems and streaming service. I loved everything they are doing. It's 
I think it's not for the best Madbox got cancelled. I thought it would have been good. I think it was a good idea. That's why I thumbed down this video. I don't care how game systems, the games and streaming service turns out, if it does well or not, do well that stuff doesn't matter to me. I don't care about popularity and don't like popularity at all. I'm still going to support all gaming companies, no matter what happens, but we can agree to disagree. Yeah, anyone watching this right now understand what the fuck this guy was saying? I think he's trying to say that the Madbox would have been cool, but it doesn't matter if it would have failed because it still would have been a good system. I think that's what he's trying to say. I have no idea. My head hurts just trying to, trying to decode that comment over there because I have no idea what the fuck he's trying to say. But... To be fair, there are a few consoles out there that, despite being unsuccessful, are pretty good systems, like the Dreamcast is a good example that I can think from the top of my head. It had a good library of games. It was a big failure, though, financially, and it led Sega to drop out of the console market. Same thing with the Sega Saturn. That was the beginning of the end for Sega, really. Uh, the Saturn's failure was really what started the whole process of Sega leaving the console market. And you know, that was another good system as well. I mean, in terms of Japanese games, really. I mean, outside of the Japanese market, the Saturn was a pretty shitty system, to be honest. Like, if you don't care about JRPGs and fighting games, the Saturn didn't really have much to offer. But, you, you know, just because a system isn't a huge success doesn't mean it's awful. Except for the Ouya. There are plenty of awful systems that were financial disasters that deserve to be failures. But... There are a few failures that were kind of underrated and deserved more success and appreciation. Definitely. So I guess I get where you're coming from. And that's assuming that what I'm um, understanding from your comment is even what you said. Because I'm just taking a shot in the dark here. I have no idea what you were trying to say. That that you didn't even have one complete sentence in that comment. Like, come on, man. We also talked about the Amazon Luna streaming service which is meant to compete with google stadia x cloud and whatever other streaming services i think verizon also has a game streaming service everyone's trying to get in on the ground floor here and i think well apparently google is already given up on stadia it's insane that they've already given up on it even though they put like how much money into this thing at least half a billion dollars probably more onto stadia and it seems like they already given up. The new Chromecast devices don't have Stadia support. They don't have Stadia support. What does that tell you about Google's faith in Stadia? I think they've already given up on it. They've already eaten the law. And they're just like, fuck it, we give up. But it's weird, though, because I see all these Stadia ads. Every time I click on a YouTube video, there's the bump, 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 bump. Woohoo! And it's the PUBG and it's the Stadia parachute. Like, I see those ads all the time, and it's just like, ah, it's so fucking annoying. <laughs> but, yeah, it seems like Google has actually given up on Stadia. And now Amazon's gonna give it a try with their Luna service. And in that video, I pretty much said that I would be really surprised if this thing really takes off that much, because it seems like Amazon is putting even less effort into Luna than Google is with Stadia. Just, there, there are no games worth playing, nothing that you really need to care about. The controller looks like a cheap piece of shit. They don't really have any games worth caring about. They're games that most people already played before, like Resident Evil 7 and these old-ass games, you know what I'm saying? Like, even if they had new games, Stadia had Red Dead Redemption 2 and all these other games that are definitely more valuable than what Luna has right now, and they still couldn't do anything with it, so... I would have a hard time believing, and of course it's the beginning, maybe they're, they're just trying to build a platform, trying to have like a proof of concept and maybe get some more investors to get in on it. I don't. I have no, no idea what Amazon's long-term plans are. I think they're just trying to start a streaming service and see where it goes from there. But I mean, when you're competing with, even, even going against Google, you're probably not going to get that far because I mean, Google, they couldn't succeed. I, I don't imagine how Amazon can. And Microsoft, they're just leagues, they're just leagues ahead of Amazon in terms of the gaming industry. Microsoft just has so much experience, and they have so many first-party IPs that you can only play on their platforms and their streaming service, you know, when we're talking about streaming, that what is Amazon going to have to offer? Fucking Crucible? People are going to buy Luna for Crucible? Yeah, I doubt it. So let's check out these comments. Dr. Daniel 316 Hilarious how yet another big company is going to try game streaming 
like it's the big thing, even though it really isn't and it's far from perfect. Considering how great other Amazon products are, I imagine this won't be any better. Yeah, remember the, what was it, the Amazon Fire Phone? Remember that was going to be the big thing and it completely flopped? Amazon, they've tried so many different things and it really hasn't worked out too well from them besides Kindle and I guess the Alexa Home. Obviously, Alexa has been pretty successful and... Uh, what 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 else did they do? Uh, I'm trying to think about like a, a, like a product that they released that just took off and became huge. I can only really think of Kindle and Alexa and of course the Amazon Store and Prime, which and people don't even subscribe to Prime for the streaming though. They subscribe to Prime for the shipping. You know what I mean? Like if it weren't for the shipping, people would not subscribe to Prime Video because it's shitty. <laughs> so if they can if they can't have a good video streaming platform and they've been on that market for years. I don't think they're going to fare much better with the uh, with the video game industry. Uh, I think it would have been smarter, honestly, for them to have a prime video game service that, uh, you know, because this Luna service is tied to Twitch, but it's a separate subscription. Why not have it where, like, Amazon Prime is tied to this Luna service and it's called, like, Prime Gaming? Because Amazon Prime is a very well-known service that a lot of people including myself are subscribed to and i guess it would be expensive for them to not have to charge you extra money for it but i think that would be the only way that people can actually start to give a fuck if they tie it to their other services because they are successful in other avenues not so much with amazon music or uh you know a lot of the other stuff they're involved in like the, the amazon really like they struggle a lot in getting something to really take off. Uh, and Kindle's really the only exception to that rule. And I'm not even sure. Did Amazon even create Kindle or did they buy it from someone else? I'm not... I don't even remember. But they're good, they're good with shipping. They're good with online shopping. When it comes to their technology and hardware, more times than not, they fail. And the same thing can be said with their services. Their Amazon Prime service is good... But it's like, you know, like, people don't subscribe to the music service. Spotify is just miles ahead of them. Same thing with Prime Video. Prime Video is only popular because it's included with the Prime shipping. So I don't know. I don't think that this Luna service is going to really do very well financially, especially with Amazon. I don't think they have a better shot at succeeding than Google. And I mean, I don't know what Amazon's cloud services are like. I don't know if they're actually good. Can't imagine they'll be much better than Google. And Google Stadia service is fucking awful. The latency is awful. So you're going to have a huge problem with latency alone. Never mind the service and the games. If the games are unplayable, it doesn't matter what games you have, right? But I guess we'll see what happens with not only Luna, but game streaming as a whole. If a few years from now the streaming services really grow and take off, uh, then that will be really interesting to see how that changes the video game industry going forward if that means the end of console gaming as we talked about earlier on and pc gaming as well if streaming is a huge threat to these well-established ecosystems in the video game industry i guess we'll we'll see what happens and there was this funny exchange between me and sierra air who's one of the biggest trolls on the internet he's always commenting on my shit and he's all over the place he does some crazy shit if you guys know who he is, you know exactly what I'm talking about. He's probably tuning in right now. Hi, Sierra. How's it going? I will defend him with this comment. He doesn't probably know a lot about Walmart because he does live... I believe he lives somewhere in the UK. I know he's Irish. I don't know if he's in Ireland or Northern Ireland, which would be part of the UK. But I'm pretty sure over across the pond, they don't really have Walmart. Walmart isn't very prevalent over there. I mean, I'm not sure. I could be completely wrong. I know nothing about stores over there but i could presume just to give him the benefit of the doubt that walmart isn't huge over there so he thinks that walmart is a fast food place that flips burgers instead of just selling them frozen in you know like like a grocery store <laughs> so i will give him the benefit of the doubt because i don't know any places in the uk so i mean i don't know any of the stores over there uh so i mean i guess that's normal because he's not an american but I just, I thought that was funny. I wanted to mess with him a little bit because he, he messes with me a lot. But it's all in jest, I think. I don't think the guy actually hates me. He just likes to fuck around and 
be annoying, I guess. I don't know. I have nothing against you, Sierra. I just can't trust you to ever run a Discord server again because two times I had you as an admin on my servers and two times my servers mysteriously got deleted and vanished and everything got fucked up. So hey, that's one thing that I might have against you, but I mean, it's a Discord server. It's not like the end of the world. I'm laughing about it now, but back then I was probably, I was really pissed off to be honest, but hey, it is what it is. Moving on, our final video for the month of September. I'm sorry, guys. I know this has been really long. I did not expect it to be this long. I hope you guys don't mind too much, but yeah, even if it's it's going on as a premiere right now, but it will be available fully on demand. So if you missed your comment, you can easily just go back and check it out. So don't worry about missing it or anything. It'll all be available to you. I don't know how long after the premiere. I think it's directly after the premiere because it's not an actual stream. It's an upload that's being presented as a stream. I'm not exactly sure how it works, but yeah. I mean, we're close to the end, so to those of you who are like, when the fuck is this going to be over? It's going to be over very soon because we got our last video where we're talking about the possibility that GameStop ain't going to be around for much longer. Now, this is something that people have been talking about for years now. Like, I, I remember guys like Rich, Review Tech USA, and a lot of these other YouTubers made videos saying GameStop will be closed, it'll be out of business within the next five years. This is back in, like, 2013, 2014. They're still alive. Uh, not by much, though. They're still losing money year after year after year. And with, the, with these digital-only consoles, my main argument was with these digital-only consoles, I think that's going to be the real nail in the coffin for GameStop because they've already made terrible financial decisions, but this is going to make it even worse because now you're going to have much less of an install base that will even have access to physical media. And that's going to mean less people buying games at GameStop than they already are right now. And that's definitely not a good thing. So let's see what you guys have to say. Annoyed Panda says it's going to suck for people who do not have good internet. Absolutely. I was talking much earlier into this stream or video or whatever the fuck you want to call it. I was saying that I had awful internet. I had to rely on a 4G hotspot. I was getting two megabits per second and it was really slow. Guess where I went to buy my new games or to buy any game? I went to GameStop because I just could not do the downloads. Now, you still have to down, like you still have to install the game, like download updates and stuff like that. But the thing I liked about physical media when I had awful internet was that even though I had to install shit into my hard drive, I at least I can download everything or install everything rather without having to use the internet. So yeah, only certain amount of storage was available on the disc. The rest of it you had to install, but you didn't have to install it over the internet except for a few games like Spyro, which required an internet connection. That's the other thing. Like physical media, never mind the digital only consoles, it's just it's been becoming obsolete because it's not just plug in you know, you put the disc in and you're ready to go. It's not like that anymore. You, you, you really you have to wait for it to install. It does install faster than it would if you were on the internet. But still, it's much more inconvenient than just going to a store and downloading it. Now, that's not me saying I prefer digital over physical. But it's just the reality of the situation. Physical has become obsolete. It hasn't been able to adapt to the times. And maybe that's on purpose. Maybe Sony and Microsoft don't want physical media to adapt they want it to collapse which i think is something we did touch upon earlier on but yeah for people who have shitty internet because there are still a lot of people out there that do not have good internet if it's digital only and you know it has been trending that way for years but if it's full-on digital no physical even single player gamers that want nothing to do with the internet they're going to be forced into it and they're going to have to wait like two weeks to download cyberpunk and you know, it's kind of ridiculous and we got a comment from sheepy is sleepy honestly i never get a game physically for pc not that they even sell physical pc games anymore the last one i ever got was civ 5 back in 2010 but with consoles like the nintendo switch i like having physical versions of my games if nintendo went digital only i'm not convinced i'd buy their consoles now i decided to include this comment because i find that very fascinating that people and it's true people are more likely to engage with physical releases and physical content with nintendo platforms than with sony and microsoft for whatever reason 
I don't know, maybe that's because a lot of Nintendo gamers are kids, and parents want to have that gift-wrapped present for kids, and, you know, there are more children on the Nintendo platform than any other platform that we have right now, so that could be part of it. Another part of it, just because, you know, there are a lot of hardcore gamers on the Nintendo platform. Not saying that there are more hardcore gamers, but a lot of the people who like Nintendo, they're also old school gamers, meaning the older people that are in, into Nintendo, like in their late 20s, 30s, 40s, 50s, you know, that age group, that they they went, they went they want to go back to the time when they collected everything, and they're really into video game collection, and you know, that's something they're really passionate about, is having that physical games collection. You see all these YouTubers out there that are really into Nintendo, they have a huge, they have all these shelves in their wall. How about, what is it, uh, Pat the NES Punk, uh, Alpha Omega Sin, all, you know, these big prominent YouTubers that talk a lot about Nintendo, a lot, and that's one of the main focuses of their channel, they have huge collections on their wall of physical games. So, I guess it might just be a thing, it might just be a preference of Nintendo gamers over those who play on Sony, PlayStation, Xbox, and PC. I don't know, but I, I found that very interesting that that is the case, because he's not the first person I've heard say something like that, that they love having physical games on Nintendo, but don't really care much for it on PlayStation, Xbox, or PC. So, I mean, let me know uh, in the chat right now, or in the comments later on, if you guys have a similar situation where you have a Switch, you have a PC, you have a PlayStation, and you, you, most of your collection on Switch is physical, while on PlayStation, it's really not so much. And on PC, of course, there is no physical market. But yeah, I just, I found that really, really fascinating. And we also have Morgana, who says, I prefer digital because I live outside the U.S. and I buy U.S. versions of games. Waiting days for shipment delivery sucks. And honestly, I don't understand that. Like, you can't wait a few days to play a game because, it, like, if it's cheaper physically, because you could resell that physical game. But because you have to get it day one, you have to get it as soon as it comes out. I mean, I really don't understand that, but I guess it's each their own. And then we got a comment from Ethan Blair, who says, If anything, they will rise as they continue to sell classic retro games. You can't kill GameStop this way. They will only get stronger as people won't accept digital games in the long run. GameStop will be a retro game store or sell game gift cards and retro games still just more so over. So... I guess what, what Ethan is trying to say is that GameStop can adapt because they can capitalize on the people who are really into physical games collection. I can imagine that if they just dedicate a lot of their physical games to Nintendo, because a lot of the Nintendo gamers are really into game collecting, they could, they could survive. Uh, and retro gaming, of course, that's a huge physical market as well. So that way they could survive. They would probably have to scale down their business significantly because I can't imagine that there will be a retro market, a retro game collecting market for literally every store they have right now. So they're probably going to have to close even more stores and fire even more people. And they will probably have to be a much smaller company than they even are now. And, they, and they've definitely shrunk a lot over the past decade. But th I guess that's a way they can survive. There's a store called Family Video that is still alive. Even though Netflix has taken over, people still go to Family Video you have that one Blockbuster left, that one Blockbuster. But, you know, the thing is that Blockbuster didn't really adapt to the times, and they could have bought Netflix. That's the ironic thing. They could have bought Netflix in the early to mid-2000s, and they said, no, we're not going to buy it. We're not going to buy you, Netflix. We, we we don't care. Like, we don't need you. <laughs> and guess what happened with that? But I guess that, that is one way that, that, uh, that I was going to say Blockbuster, that GameStop can survive as if they adapt their business model and you know I, I remember that that's something they were thinking about doing that they were looking into i don't know why it hasn't worked the other thing is that they can only have so much supply of old shit that's 20 30 years old so like i said that wouldn't be sustainable for every store they have right now so they probably would have to close a bulk of their stores to make that their main business model and i'm not sure exactly how that would work but you're, you, you're definitely onto something that they could survive if they adapt to the times and, Kate, and really capitalize on the people who are still passionate about physical games. 
And one way to do that, of course, is retro. Selling retro consoles and games and accessories. But I think I'm going to wrap it up right now because I think we've gone long enough. Of course, there are a lot more comments I could have read, but I think I think this is uh, this this is a good time to end. We're, we're almost... We're getting close to the hour and a half mark, and I think that's a little bit too much for a video where I'm just reading comments. I think you guys are tired of the constant Titanfall 2 gameplay and me sucking ass at the game. So, I think I'm just going to end it here. Thank you all who tuned in for the live premiere, and those of you who missed it, it's always available on demand. I do plan on streaming this upcoming Sunday night, so... If you guys are available, then tune in then, because I actually will be live and interacting with you guys live in the chat. So that should be really fun, because it's very rare that I actually do real live streams. It's like once every few months, so should be something special. Hope you guys have the time to tune in, because that will be really fun. But I hope you guys enjoyed this one. It took me a lot of time to put this together. I don't know why it took me more time this month than the previous months, but I wanted to make sure I got it through, and I know it took a little longer than previous months because usually I do it either the last day of the month or the first day of the next month but it got delayed a little bit but I hope you guys <laughs> hope you guys liked it I'm just gonna end it here because I'm dragging on uh yeah I appreciate all your support you all mean the world to me and I hope you guys are staying safe during this shitty time in the world have a good night